Hello again. So that last video was just introduction to what engineering is as compared to a scientist or a technician and what heuristics involved in that you can't be a perfectionist, that nothing in the real world is exact or perfect, but you get by and rather than call it rule of thumb or guessing on things that are not analytically solvable, we're going to call it heuristics. The next thing I would like to go through is the engineering method, and I'm hoping that this will be a very good help on your project and something that you will use in the future. So I'm going to go hop over to the notes. So yes, engineering is applied. And when thinking about something that is applied versus science, so I think everybody is familiar with the scientific method. So we're going to go through the difference between scientific method and engineering method or engineering design process. And the engineering design process, understanding what that is, is actually one of the course SLOs. It's something that you might see on your fundamental of engineering exam at the end of your bachelor degree. It's it's something that, you know, if writers have writer's block, then they go to some outlines to get them started and get juices flowing. And it organizes thoughts. It helps you get through stuff. And for the STEM world, the scientific method does that for science and the engineering method does that for engineering. So if you ever don't know what to do or how to proceed or just get that engineering method back out again and it'll, it'll get you started on some things. OK, so let's go over the scientific method. And as we do this, I want you to think about how would engineering differ from that science? So if you've ever done a science fair project or any kind of a science report, usually you start with a question, right? So why is the sky blue? Why is the, you know, tree is dying? Why is this? And you'll, you'll guess an answer to that. And then you create some kind of an experiment and you test out if your hypothesis is true or not. And, Sometimes you get it right, and sometimes there's some very interesting test results, so you have to rethink everything. So you're going to analyze your results. And the grand finale of the entire thing is your conclusion. So have you discovered some new piece of information? And you might give a talk at a conference and, oh, look at this. We, we discovered this new thing. So that's where it starts and where it ends. Okay, the engineering method. Where would the engineering method start? And at the very end of the process, what should be the result of it? What is it just a conclusion? You just wrote a paper or what's what's the result of it? And when you start the thing out, do you start by asking a question or is there some different thing, some different objective? for the entire process. So there's actually a lot of different versions of the engineering method and really there's nothing set in stone and, and one project versus another is gonna follow slightly different. I'm gonna go ahead and use, so this is an example textbook. I'm not making you guys use any textbooks. This is in the library if you wanna check one out and just see what it's about but it has this 10 stage design process. So I'm gonna use that and it's pretty complete. The other methods that I've seen have a bit fewer steps in it, but this is, this is a good one. Okay, so for the engineering method, instead of starting with a question, what we're gonna do is we are going to start with a problem. So this could be not enough parking spaces, traffic jams. This could be, you know, grandma and grandpa have health trouble. They have trouble hearing or maybe communications, language barriers. So any kind of problem you can think of from, you know, your car's gas mileage isn't the greatest to getting lost on the roads. And it's, it's not a question. It's an actual problem that needs to be solved. And the end of it, you haven't written a paper. It's not about presenting research work at a conference. 
the final goal of engineering is you've tangibly created something that actually solves that problem. And the solution isn't going to be perfect. It's not going to be exact, but hopefully life goes on just a little bit better and you just make a little progress, a little more progress, a little more progress. And that's, you know, that's the name of the game. So you start with a problem, you end by building something to make that problem go away at least a little bit. And the steps from identifying the problem to the end, how do you get from, from that starting point to the end? So here is one take on that. And I have this in the quiz, and this is one of the things that I have to report that, okay, everybody knows the engineering method. You can remember it with PGR, like progress, BAT, DCCR. I've highlighted those letters in here in this um, list. So if that helps to make it a little bit easier to memorize, do that, but, but memorize this 10 list here right now. So you start by figuring out what the problem is. The next step is you have to figure out what your goals are. So cost, time, energy efficiency, so what, and make your goals specific, measurable, achievable. Give yourself a very clear direction to go in. And once you have this, you're, you're going to research, okay? So you're not the only person on the planet that has dealt with this problem, that's been trying to solve it. And you'll get a lot farther, faster when you research. And research for engineering, it's not maybe in the library, you might take your competitor's product and tear it apart, reverse engineer, see what's actually in there. There's a lot of proprietary information that it's not published. You'll only get that research and background info if you talk to people and network, go to conferences. And so it's, you know, gathering that data can be a very important part, but it's, you'll, you'll get that data from some interesting sources often. Okay, this first problem, goals, research, this first chunk, that's kind of the background info of the project that you get, you get a handle on what the problem is, what your goals are, background research. And when you understand all the background in it, the next step is to brainstorm. And I will have you create a brainstorming decision table as part of the initial project setting up, deciding, getting everybody kind of on the same platform, solving the same problem and evaluating what solution or combination of solution is best going to reach your goal. So we'll put together a decision table for that. To sort through all the brainstormed ideas. So when you're brainstorming, this is you're going for quantity, quantity, not quality, just tons of crazy, crazy ideas. And then once you have all those crazy ideas out there, how do you decide which idea would be best? And you start with analysis, a little bit more research and thinking through. And for your top ideas that kind of come to the top of that analysis stage, that's when you're going to want to start physically testing maybe some very rough prototypes to make your final decision. So you're going to analyze and test, and that all goes with your brainstorming, okay? So you have all these ideas. You have to sort through them all, figure out which is best. And then finally, after analyzing and testing all of those brainstorm ideas, you'll make a decision on what solution you're going to pursue. Okay, so once that decision has finally been made, there's going to be a lot of meetings, this is the joke is how many engineers does it take to make a spaceship? Well, it's more than one, right? It's a team sport. <laughs> and so this is communicating, making sure everyone understands why you made the decision you did. And that's really important because if you don't have everything, you know, on the same team and the same understanding, you have to convince everybody that, yeah, that decision really was the best way to go. So communicate and then you're going to break up 
the task. So we'll do some team management or um, project organization where you decide who is going to do research and development, who is doing testing, who is building, who is and split up everything so that everybody in the team has some work that matches their personality and their interests in the project. And it is not until step number nine that you actually build the thing. So that's kind of interesting, right? The vast majority of this engineering process is thinking through, playing with models, and it's not until the very end that you're building and commercializing it and it's actually on the market. And of course, nothing is ever perfect. And so after it's been on the market for a while and maybe a few complaints start coming in about it that, oh, this broke or this didn't do that, you're going to review what you created. And, you know, everything is updated every year, every six months. Software goes through updates, new car, new cell phone, new, everybody wants it shiny and new and improved. <laughs> and that's, you're going to review what is out there and then come back to the top. As you're thinking through your project ideas, remember, you don't have to create anything from scratch with, you know, everything, there's 8 billion people in the world. And there's nothing, very few things that are actually genuinely new. So what, what most inventions are and creations are an improvement on what exists. So you just take what exists, a water bottle, a backpack, a pencil, anything out there, and you think about how could this be just a little bit better, right? So you say, oh, this fits on my bike, but if I could hold just a little bit more water, that would be nice. Or maybe this is a little bit hard to open with my teeth. So it could be a little bit easier to, to drink out of it, you know, a one-handed to drink while you're actually on your bike. So just think through it. And if you have a hobby and something that you're familiar with, that is going to go a long way for um, understanding the problem in depth, already have some background research that you're familiar with it. So for your projects, pick something you're interested in that would be fun to work on, that you're familiar with, and um, review the products that are already out there. Pick something, see if you can make it just a little more economical, a little more environmentally safe, a little bit faster, a little more durable, safer, or some functionality of it. So take what's out there and all you have to do is just make it a little bit better. And that's, that's what progress is. Going into some of these steps in a little bit more depth, Understanding what the problem that you're trying to solve is, is extremely important and sometimes very hard to really get to the information. If there's, you know, ever a problem at work and people, people aren't going to come out and just say what's going on, right? So they'll avoid it and, you know, I don't know who's, it's embarrassing if someone made a mistake and it's, um, so here's, here's an example of chemical engineering problem. So you're working on the oil pipes. And here's some of the stuff that goes on in the energy industry, right? So you get, and this is not ice, it's hydrate. It's like a buckyball that forms around um, CH4 and some methane. And there's all different kinds of hydrates depending on the encapsulated gas molecule. So you get, it's multi-phase flow, right? You've got solids. You've got gas pockets. You can think of at home, if you've ever had those water hammers in your pipes, that's so awful. So imagine that going on in a huge oil pipeline that's you know, 12, 24 inches in diameter. And you've got different types of fluids. You have oil, you have water, and it's, it's a real mess to try and get this to flow. Here's waxes, wax builds up on it. So the temperature changes a little bit. Something that was liquid is now solid. You get scale, just like you get on, you know, your kitchen sink, that white junk that, <laughs> so that's happening miles down in the ground, sand is in there, corrosion, it's salt water. Salt water is extremely corrosive. 
Okay, so let's say it's an area that has ice and they're trying to figure out if hydrates are gonna form and what they should do about it. And the solutions for this are put a giant heater around it or chemical dousting. If you've ever lived up north where it snows and you get icy roads, so right, you put, I guess, not salt anymore down on the roads, but there's some chemicals that change that where that phase change happens. So yeah, you can douse it. And this is, you know, not very environmentally friendly. You have to remove these chemicals on the other side of it. But yeah, they change when that phase change happens. So the the liquid to solid, you can kind of push it a little bit so that when the temperatures get lower, you'll it'll still flow. It won't ice up quite as quickly. The electric heating, you know, just you heat the whole thing up and it's takes energy, but I mean it's an oil and gas pipeline. They produce their own energy, so that's <laughs> But it's, it's going to be expensive to, to build this stuff. Once it's in there, you can see these pigs, actually. If you go to the um, Science Museum downtown, the very top floor, they redid the energy halls. And I'll give you some bonus event points if you go down and check that out. I think they have free days on Thursdays. So that would be really fun if you went down. And it's quite a good exhibit on um, the electricity and oil and gas industry down there if you're at all interested in that field. So anyways, here's a scenario. They decided they're going to go with electric heating. They go buy this huge heater. And um, yeah, this is, <laughs> we won't name the company that this happened at. Months going around, fighting over the heater. So they, they take the temperature upstream and downstream, and the heater is not increasing the temperature enough. It's not powerful enough. And the argument was, so it was contractors. It wasn't the oil and gas company. It was contractors that put this in place. They're very expensive. And so there was a little bit of, oh, it's the contractor's fault that this thing is junk and they didn't produce what we asked them for. And then there's another Maybe it wasn't installed correctly, that it was okay, but then it, it wasn't installed. And that's why the temperature isn't heating up enough. And so just, you know, angry back and forth, it's their fault, it's their fault. And this is to figure out what the problem is. And it, <laughs> so the new guy comes in and everyone, okay, whose side are you going to be on? What do you think happened? And, and they went back from scratch, redid the calculations and found that it was not the contractor's fault. The order was wrong. They had done their calculations wrong. They didn't have the correct power needed on it. And that, yeah, what they asked for was delivered, but they asked for the wrong power and the wrong size of heater is what it, it boiled down to. So the whole argument was completely <laughs> move but that's just an example that you know and you've been in these situations where so maybe some you have a problem and somebody's trying to help you giving you all this advice right and you're like i can't take that advice that advice is junk because you don't even understand what the problem is you have to understand what the problem is first so just to start your project out if you can identify a very clear problem. And this is a great way to get creative juices flowing to figure out what the problem is and get as much information as you can on what's really going on and what people really need. That is a big chunk. And that's that'll get you started on any engineering project. Okay, so here's um random, yeah, here's Hibernia up here. There's um it gets cold up there. It's very cold. <laughs> Massive stuff. Okay. Define working goals. And this is, yeah, you can call it the wishful thinking. You want to keep everything realistic and doable and timely, but, you know, aim for the stars, hit the moon, but have some specific goals. You want to... 
you know, how much exactly will it cost? And start with a ballpark figure, look at what else is out there, and then set an actual cost. And then when you're analyzing and testing all of your brainstormed ideas, you can evaluate those ideas. How much does this idea cost? Okay, production. So there's, there's various different things that go into the cost, whether it's um, transport, maintenance, but also production. Um, look at size, weight, strength, aesthetics, ease of use. So is this being built for children, adults, older people? Safety is huge. That's so these are kind of the generic things for every project. And depending on what research area you decide on in your group, you'll have some different criteria that you'll be looking at for your specific field. But um, yeah, there's always gonna be legal concerns and um, you know, environmental and just understanding what people want. So the more user input that you can get, the better it will be. Um, look at com competitors, and this is, you want something that is specific. So rather than less emissions or increased gas mileage, try and put an actual number to this. So I want to decrease emissions by 25%, and then you're going to research current emissions and say, okay, this is where we currently are. If I decrease that by 25%, this is where we are and look at filters and different ways or, you know, gas mileage. You can look at the average gas mileage in city versus town. So have some, some specific goals here and um, make it, if you've ever seen SMART goals, this is a good acronym that goals need to be specific, something you can measurable. So at the very end of the semester, you can't just say, oh, yeah, it's stronger. I want to see test results that you actually added weights, found where it broke, measured that strength of it, and then compared. This is where it was. This is where it is that, yes, we actually improved it by that 25% or something. So you have to have quantitative data sheets, graphs, some kind of numerical measurement that show that you're actually reaching those goals. So actionable, realistic. We only have one semester to get through this. So timely and um, so goals. So define the problem, state your goals. Third thing in this engineering method is research. Research is where you're going to gather data and Talk with people in the field, talk with people who are using what you're creating and collaboration, collaboration. This is, I love this. You might see this poster on your physics classroom wall. And of course you recognize some people like Einstein, Curie, Planck, depending on what field you're going into. So Dubai, the Bragg, these are um, poly exclusion principle, Heisenberg, Fowler, Schrodinger. There's a lot of famous people. And the point of this is they knew each other. They talked with one another. They didn't come up with this stuff individually. They came up with this stuff collaboratively together as a team that, um, so this is, um, yeah, you have to learn how to network. And I know there's a lot of introverts that go into STEM fields. You have to communicate, you have to network to get ahead. And um, so here's, what's the difference between plagiarism and research? <laughs> I heard this on NPR once. And the answer is research uses more than one reference. People love it when you use their ideas and you reference them, but just give people credit. And your project needs to be a combination of multiple groups, multiple ideas. So don't just get everything from one source. If you're just copying from one source, that is copying, that is plagiarism. But if you, you see this source and then you see this other source over here, 
and maybe a third source. You need at least three or four different ways of doing things. You're going to compare them, combine them. That's how it becomes your own, and you're not just copying and plagiarizing someone else. So yes, research, use what's out there, but use it honestly. Give credit where credit's due, and don't just, you know, tag along one person. Look at a spectrum of solutions and then combine those to find what is best. Okay, so yeah, with your, your lab write-ups and your final project, you're gonna need a good-sized reference section. So get in the habit of anytime you come across a neat or useful website or book or even a person, write down where that information came from. Just get in the habit of recording all of that information so that you can have a really nice reference section at the end of your report. Okay, so one, two, three. Define your problem, state your goals, background research, gather all your references, background research. Number four is going to be brainstorming. And this is something that you'll need to do after you form your project groups. And I would like you to use something like Zoom or WebEx. We'll, I, I'll show you how to set some of those up. There's Microsoft Teams. And I'm guessing that everybody in your group will be familiar with you know, one platform versus another. They're fairly similar, but part of engineering is becoming computer literate and you know, if you can drive a Ford, you can drive a Chevy. They're not that different. You can figure it out. <laughs> so we're going to have some good brainstorming sessions. And the rules of brainstorming, this is not testing an analysis stage. You are not critiquing the ideas. You are not judging anything. It's just wild, crazy. And it should be like a think tank where one person's ideas will give other person's ideas too. So that's fine to get wild and crazy. You're going for quantity. So lots and lots of different ideas. And start this, get everybody on the same page by agreeing on what problem you want to solve. So first, agree on a problem. Do you want to make an energy generator? Do you want to purify water? Do you want to make a better bicycle? Do it. So define what problem and then have everybody brainstorm ideas for that problem. And you're going to write down everybody's ideas, everybody's contributions. Make sure that everybody is contributing. So introvert versus extrovert. Some people like to write it down. Introverts, you'll get more feedback from them if they have advanced preparation. So send them an email. They, they prefer text over talking or um, emails over talking. So let them know, okay, we're going to have a meeting and the meeting's going to be tomorrow night. And your contribution is you're going to brainstorm ideas for this. And that's good for everybody to, to have time, to have it in the back of your mind. So you're, you're thinking things through before you get to the meeting as well. Okay, so you record everybody's ideas. And you can use um, something online like Google Docs or Google Sheets. Um, so have something that everybody can access and write on. And once all of those ideas are out there, then you'll go through the analysis and testing phase, critique the ideas on how well they fulfill the goals that you have set, and I'll have a decision table, something that's used in industry. That will be the second week of class that you go through the analysis and testing phase for, for your brainstormed ideas. Okay, so here's here's an example exercise for how something like that would work. So you say, oh, my lawn watering system is horrible. I've got a big puddle of water over here and dry dirt over there, and it's not even, and it's loud. It wakes up the neighbors, right? So it's, it's ugly. So you list all the problems that you want to solve, and that's kind of where your goals are will be. <laughs> where the problems are too, right? So you want even complete coverage and you don't want it to be noisy and you want it to, you know, be look good too. 
So you look at the current models, here's some of the different things that people have out there. And then you brainstorm different solutions. So once you have the solutions down, you can analyze those. So you say, oh, okay, this is cheap. You just hook it up to your hose and you're done versus something that's actually installed in your ground. Is it loud? How much area does it cover? So you can go through each of those ideas and decide how well each idea does for each of the goals. Um, yeah, clarify ideas, ask some more questions about it, list pros and cons. Sometimes you'll have two ideas that are very similar, so you can combine them, or maybe you have two that you could combine those two different ideas too. And the top ideas, if you're able, test them out somehow. And this could be through CAD. If you get someone in your group that's good with CAD, that's great. Otherwise, hand sketched designs are perfectly fine. That's where most designs start is just, you know, a lunch meeting at a restaurant and you sketch it on a napkin or something. And so, yeah, sketch some pictures, make some models, just, you know, Play-Doh, cardboard, duct tape. It's make it simple, but there's something about having a physical model in your hands that you can manipulate and play with that really solidifies ideas. If a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is worth more than an actual physical model that you can play with. And, you know, everybody's done the in theory and then you actually start building something, right? You put the front porch on your house or you start messing with your car and it's not until you get your hands in it and dirty that you realize all the little details that start coming out with the builds that you didn't, you know, theoretically, pencil and paper, you don't realize all of those little. <laughs> okay, so here's an example decision table. We'll go through this more in depth week number two, but it's listing working criteria. This is your goals. And then you're gonna say how important each of those goals are and for each of your ideas how well and this will just be an estimate how well does each of your ideas score for these and I'm already going long on time sorry so I'll go through this more in depth for the week number two and these are things that are actually used in industry it'll be a good um, overview and intro to using Excel um, so that will be seven can you remember all of them so far find the problem state your goals background research brainstorm analyze test and then you make your decision and then once your decision is made you're going to have meetings communicate break up tasks figure out how everything is going to be done and when i do team evaluations for 1201 and if you've ever worked in teams before, and this is something, so part of your project grade will come from the people you're working with. And that is one of the student learning objectives. It's required for engineering degrees that you work in teams. And it will be project after project, team after team, lab after lab. You will be working with people the whole way through your educational process. And that is industry too. When People call me asking about a student. They don't ask about grades or how smart. The first thing they ask, how well do they work with other people? That is just the world. Networking is extremely important. Um, as you're deciding who is gonna be the manager of your group, the person who posts their ideas first, the person who writes the most emails, responds to phone calls the most frequently and first, that is your manager and that's <laughs> you can climb the ladder in business the easiest way to climb it it's not generally the smartest person it's the person that communicates the best that you know that if you reach out to them you're not talking to you know crickets that you're going to hear back something and when you're replying to others it doesn't have to be well thought out it doesn't have to be a long essay just a quick, oh, hey, yeah, thanks for that note. It's on my plate. I'll get back to you when I have some more time. So just a real quick, but let them know you're there, that you saw it, and get in the habit of just 
replying very quickly and having lots and lots of emails. That's that's half of every engineer's day is going through emails and meetings. And those meetings are essential. That's <laughs> that is that's the majority. As in fact, as you get to be more and more senior in your company, it turns into the the president and the VP. That is all they do is meeting, meeting after meeting. That's all they do is meetings. So this is <laughs> this is just know that from the start that you cannot get through engineering without team. And this this is one of the things you're supposed to learn in intro to engineering is working with other people. So coordinating schedules and getting meetings together and making sure everybody has work to do. So, okay, you're researching this and you're designing this piece and you're designing that piece and you're building on this piece and make sure that every person on the team has a very specific task that they have to do. And we're going to outline all of that, hold everybody accountable with what tasks need to be done, what date those tasks need to be done by, and then have you know some milestone checkpoints to get through those gates of the project to make sure that everything is on task. But communication is key. And communication happens through reports, through manuals, presentations, meetings, phone calls, emails, Technical communication is very different than what you've learned in English classes. And we'll go through how to make really nice tables and high quality figures and graphs and make it look professional. And, and that's, it's very different. It's not MLA. I, I've never seen a STEM book written in MLA format. <laughs> that's, so it's, um, and you'll probably have a class that is just on technical communication. And it's, when we do our ethics cases, there's some very serious, you know, people died, factories blow up, and it happened over communication. That the writing for it's very sad when that happens. Okay, so communication, the last step is commercialize and build the thing. And finally, the end of the project, you've made it, people are using it, and then you're going to review and see how you can make next year's model even better because nothing's ever perfect. Okay, so that is. Sorry for the long video. Hopefully you figured out how to speed these things up. You can you can actually um, understand about twice the speed as someone can talk. If you find yourself rewinding the video and rewatching it, the speed was too fast. But push up that speed so that you can get through these lectures faster. And hopefully that'll give you some ideas and how to start organizing your project and getting through it. And there's a little engineering method quiz to, to help solidify that. So this is one of the student learning objectives, engineering method, working in teams. We'll do a bunch of that stuff. Okay, we'll see you next time.